but now let's get into the chat. Let's see. Tweety Pie. Some banks are more equal than others. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you got the big four, and those guys are more equal than the lower 20. So this is also true. Bob Hawk, thank you. Zo Bix says 13K Bitcoin still on the card. I agree. This is crypto. So like, I know when people like say, well, it's, you know, hyper Bitcoinization, 1 million in 90 days, that feels good. And uh, is it, I don't know if it's truly possible to do that. But what do I know? I called for 150K Bitcoin last cycle. Totally wrong. I called for a 10K Ethereum. I talked about how great uh, Voyager and Celsius was. That turned out to be not the truth. So don't listen to me. Uh, RS says, when Alaska? Alaska Gold Rush, that uh, game just dropped. Well, the game didn't drop, but uh, the uh, token generation event over at Tencent dropped today. I did a deep dive into it, but uh, there was some incorrect information, so I need to update it. But it uh, looks like a solid project, you know? Um, it's a it's a it's not a play to earn game, it's a win to earn game. And they are built on Polygon, like everything else. Oh, did you also hear about Polygon got picked up by Salesforce? Salesforce. Salesforce is a customer relationship manager software that a lot of the Fortune 500 companies use, a lot. Like when I was at KCI, we used Salesforce. And they're going to allow people to tokenize and do some type of um, uh, loyalty points or loyalty rewards or something for their businesses that are within Salesforce. So I thought it was pretty interesting. And there was like big, big businesses. Uh, so, you know, if it's built on Polygon, hey, it's a pretty good deal. XRP extreme rug pull? Nah, I don't know. Who knows? I still have XRP. Yeah, I don't know. Why is Max Kaiser and a bunch of this saying Bitcoin will peak 2023 than 2025? Because they want it that way. Take it with a grain of salt. I don't know. They don't know. They'd like it to be. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Frank P says, I read that Microsoft browser will offer a self-custody of Bitcoin. There was a developer who put out information which looked like uh, Microsoft Edge, the browser platform. They're offering a wallet, non-custodial, which you can use for crypto. So yes, so Microsoft's done pretty good. They bought ChatGPT and they implemented that into Edge browser. Not everybody can use it right now, but it looks pretty uh, fabulous. And uh, they're gonna do a crypto wallet. So things are, look. Everybody thought that once the crash happened with FTX and everything, a lot of people were saying, well, crypto is going to go to zero. And now we see all these, I mean, like Fidelity and all these big, big companies, BNY Mellon and BlackRock. And, you know, everybody seems to Disney picking up Polygon for an incubator program. And I mean, just look around. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are going on with, with crypto and digital assets where it's just weird. It's like, it's like the news, when the news reports that, I remember in 20, end of 2017 or 2018, MSNBC was talking about how great XRP was. And, uh, and then it just like crashed like two or three weeks later and they didn't really talk about it. And then in the last bull run in 2021, they were talking about how great crypto was and like they always talk about it at the peak and then it just falls off the face of the planet. And now all the news broadcast you're talking about just how awful crypto and digital assets are and it starts to spike and the worst offender is jim kramer i think like three <laughs> three weeks ago that guy's talking about everybody needs to sell all their bitcoin all right a month ago he was talking about how great silicon valley bank is like i don't know how the hell that guy has a job it's like him and the weatherman they're the only ones that can be wrong all the time and still have their job it's amazing so Yes, good to be here. Uh, <laughs> what kind of news? Eh, just some stuff. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing, Gary, is that it's tough to accumulate. Well, it's not tough for us. Like if you're here right now, you've probably accumulated at some point, right? I'm not worried about you guys. The ones I'm worried about are the ones that are going to come you know, if Bitcoin does shoot off the moon for some reason, like we just talked about, 
and starts hitting all time highs, all the people that come in, those are the guys that I worry about because they're going to FOMO in, they're going to buy at the peak and the top and everybody's going to dump on them, I think. And that's when, and there's a video in the link in the description of when I'm going to sell my crypto 80%. And once that happens, this channel will go into hiding until the bear market. Because I'm not going to be responsible for that again. People, you know, hyping up everything and whatever else. I'm just going to say like, hey, we're, you know, we're getting to a top. I sold 80% and uh, I'm not going to sell everything. But now it's up to you if you're here, just like what Gary said. I'm going to be like, look, if you haven't accumulated now, it's going to be tough. And there's even a, and, and people are like, ah, oh, Rob, is, you know, how, how, how can you say that? Well, let me show you something. And we talked about this numerous times. The closer you get to the massive bear or the bull market, the worse off you're going to be as far as returns and the risk that you have, in all honesty. So look at this. We did this last time. But I just took, I took five different cryptos. And historically speaking, starting on January 1st, 2018, because I'm a big believer in the four-year cycles. And I said, look, if you invested $100 every seven days, starting on January 1st, 2018, right? If you invested $100, if you would have sold at the top, you would have invested $20,000 and you would have had $146,000, which is like, a, it's like a 7X. Congratulations, you did great, because you start all the way over here right? However, if you would have done it in 20, all right, fine. In 2019, you would have invested $15,000 and you would have had about a hundred K, but it's still a six and a half X. The hypothesis is this, is if you get out of the, 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 the truly brutal bear market, just kind of wait for things to settle it down. And then you're still in the bear market and accumulate, you can actually do pretty good. But then as you get closer to the bull run, if you would have started in 2020, you only had 4X. You would have invested 10,000 and got 40,000. And if you would have gone on 2021, you would have invested 4,600 bucks and you only had a 67.85 or 67.58. So it's only a one and a half X. Boo, boring. Ethereum, same thing. 100 bucks, sorry, on January 1st, it would be a 16X. 17X in 2019, in 2020, it's only 11X. In 2021, you only would have doubled your money, which is still better than traditional markets. Cardano. If you guys are in 2018, you would have 35X. 2019, 39X. Congratulations, you're a baller. 2020, 26X, but still pretty damn good. And in 2021, you only would have tripled, which is awful. So again, the closer you get to these, these, these bull runs, the worse off you are. You better for me, historically, to invest when nobody wants to invest and it's trash and everybody hates talking about it and it's a bear, brutal bear market. That's where all the profits are made and we see it historically. However, I talked about this before, whoops, Dash Assault. Not all these projects are gonna come back. Dash was supposed to be awesome. If Beardy's on, if Beardy's here, sorry, Beardy. No, Beardy is EOS, sorry. But Dash, if you would have, <laughs> if you would have invested on January 1st, 2018, for four years, you only would have tripled your money. That's sad. I mean, it's in crypto world. And if you would have done that in in uh, on salt, you would still be down. So again, those are just examples that you take a look at and go, maybe, first of all, not everything's going to make it. And second of all, as time goes on, my returns are lessened as I get into it. This is what's what concerns me about the people who are going to be FOMOing in towards the top it's a long answer for one question gary great question no you're wrong this is a huge bull trap could be i don't know i do have these uh these sayings right here what's the very last rule what's the last rule take profits it's easy to it's easy to buy the dip but it's hard to, to take profits and I'm going to do a video. You know what you should focus on? Not how high it could go. I think what people should start focusing on is tracking their portfolio and seeing how much they're up. I think that would help people. Like, wow, I'm up, you know, $50,000. 
that's pretty great. What Bitcoin could could double it means I could have a hundred thousand, but I'm out fifty thousand. Maybe that's it. Or maybe people should just start thinking in Satoshis. Maybe that's the way, the, the next play. Okay. Jackal says, yeah, hopefully Fidelity will come around and allow people to custody their assets. It's ha It'll happen. Don't know when, but it'll happen at some point. Do you own any OMG up 45% now? I think I did used to own that in like 20, I don't know, when I was a, Degenerate buying a bunch of stuff. My lungs are looking juicy. Be careful. 38% with no retrace. Exactly. Exactly. Short the Fed by Bitcoin. That's a t shirt waiting to happen. Oh, interesting. Tom's Diner. I'm in the UK and my bank, Nat West, has put a thousand pound daily limit or 5,000 a month to crypto. Really? Or 5,000 a month, the crypto exchange is saying they are doing this for my own protection. <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah, it sucks. Mm. Bitcoin to the moon. Well, okay. Got to run. That's good. OMG up 55%. What are your thoughts on privacy coins like Zcash? Uh, I used to own some Zcash. I don't have any more. Monero, I like that. I like Zcash and Monero. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, James, very bullish on Solana. Very true. Do you expect new lows coming this year for Bitcoin? The market just squeezing will eventually pick one direction. Yeah, it's not, I can tell you what I think is going to happen. I never thought we'd reach an all-time high this year. I always thought we'd go down. I thought we could hit 12 or 13K. I still believe that. But it doesn't matter what I believe because I'm not a fortune teller. So for me, it's very simple. If it goes down, I really would like it to go down. I must be honest with you guys. So if it goes down, then all my, you know, my daily orders for Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and Avalanche and Polkadot and Near and Chainlink and a bunch of other stuff, I get cheaper stuff. And I know where we're going. I think I know where we're going you know, over the next two or three years. So I'm ecstatic. If it goes up, I'll be honest with you. I'm not super excited about it because i'm like shoot i could have really bought more but it's never going to be enough right it's never going to be enough so i just look at it and um like i said there's a video in the description of every video i do it's called when i'm going to sell 80 percent of my crypto and there's some indicators i'm going to follow from now on and uh, once those indicators hit that's it and uh, i keep 20 percent, which is way more than the majority of the population has so I'm good for me. My goals aren't your goals, right? Yeah, Tom's got a point. It's the fact that money isn't, my money isn't really my money. And that's the thing. People don't understand about self-custody because they think if it's in the bank, it's my money. But people are slowly finding out. And that's why like these bank runs are, are a great wake up lesson. They figuring out that, hey, that my money is not my money because when I went to the bank, they couldn't give me my money. So what do I do? I can't do anything. I have to just hope that the government steps in. If it doesn't, well, I'm screwed. So then they'll think, they'll think, well, I'll just put it in cash and I'll stuff it under my mattress. And you can do that. Still kind of risky. You could do that. But I can guarantee you this. If you go to any bank, if more than 10% of people Go to their bank and ask their money. Sorry, sir, we don't have. Sorry, sir, ma'am, we don't have your money. What do you mean you don't have my money? Yeah, we don't carry that much cash. You have to wait a week. Well, what's going to happen in that week? Well, hopefully it's here and hopefully we're still solvent. So good luck. And that's it. Or they can figure out this thing called self, like true self-custody, where you put on one of these, these ledgers, and they go to danteachescrypto.com, the 100% free website, where I show you how to do it in under 20 minutes with all the different videos I have there for just this part, very simple. There's like, they're like three to five minutes, break them all up, bite-sized pieces, all that stuff. And they figure out that, wow, that's really my money. And then when, when I pay for things, if I need to pay for things, I want to send things for good services or whatever else, there's a finality to it in roughly 10 to 30 minutes. That's pretty awesome. There's other ones that are faster, but you know, Bitcoin. 
So once people figure that out and they'll be like, wow, this is like, this is like gold, except that I can pay people with it and not have heavy gold tokens on me and get robbed. Don't hate me, gold and silver people. I own gold and silver, but I just got to tell you, I think it's a little bit risky to have gold medallions all over the place. Just saying. Uh, Risco, your back here looks good. How many years are you doing it? This is just a green screen. Don't pay no attention. You guys are overdosing on whole PM thinking Bitcoin raise your million. MK has a point. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest. The chances of it going to a million aren't great. But if it does, hey, I'll be happy. And I'll take a dive into my green screen if that happens. But uh, yeah, if it makes a million, sure. But let's say it doesn't. Let's just say the narrative. So, so that's the thing, right? If this is a confidence game and we're putting out the information that Bitcoin go, could go to a million and people pick that up, what does that mean? People are going to get into Bitcoin and then other crypto and digital assets. Is that good for the space? Mm, if they learn about <clears throat> the theory behind money and versus currency versus self-custody versus a fractional reserve banking system, and they understand the pros and cons, then it's a victory. If people are just getting into it, so like, wow, numbers go up, like I did in 2017, that's not going to help us. Yeah, Shay says 30K and drop up a cliff. Who knows? Uh, did you know Peter Schiff lives near you? Yeah, he's right down the street. I was just at his house. Just kidding. Yeah, I know Peter Schiff lives in Puerto Rico. I know his bank didn't do too good, though. Mm, can you dance salsa? I can dance horribly. My wife is the real dancer. If Balaji's scenario plays out and USD banks collapse, what is our counter move when the US government inevitably attempts to ban or and or confiscate Bitcoin? Miss Bitcoin is KYC linked, aka a registry. So... I mean, people will talk about that, and they'll also talk about how there was a run on gold in uh, the 20s or 30s. Right? I can't always forget. There was a confiscation of gold. Could it happen? Sure, it could happen. The real thing, though, is this, because, yeah, there is a registry, but they can only do that if that's even legal. I mean, they could make it legal. That's only here in America. So... When the American government seized gold, does that mean that gold just went away? No, because it's only here in the United States. That was a long time ago. And now that we have everything as far as the global community hooked in together and e-commerce and everything else, what's to say that you couldn't use a VPN and get Bitcoin your own way? It would take a hit, but it would just take the air out the bag and then it would just go to some other place. I'm pretty sure Korea would be very happy with that. I'm pretty sure Russia would be ecstatic. China, not so much. They have digital yuan. And probably the European nations, Netherlands, Africa for sure, probably Canada, maybe Mexico. I'm sure they'd be very happy with that and go, okay, well, that's fine. And then it would just roll on. That's why you, you can try to stop it, but in this day and age, very tough. Hey, Rob. Yes. Drinking some beer for the Bitcoin pump. Can you chill some World Mobile for the audience? Sure. So I own a lot of World Mobile token. I own so much. I am a uh, Earth Node operator. I like World Mobile. I like Mickey Watkins and the team behind it because they are giving uh, telecommunications to people that don't have that. And they've also, it's actually a working product. They're doing it right now. Tanzania and some different other places. They're rolling it out with these aerostats. And you can use it in those areas and um, they're giving service to all those people. Whereas it's be too expensive to give that to those people because the regular companies can't make it in. So I'm a believer in that. And especially if they partner up with Starlink, which is things that I've heard. So uh, that's about it. I'm not telling you to get into it. I'm just saying I like it. <laughs> Cricket says, is that really a green screen? And why is it not your usual indoor pool? See, they're all green screens. Like in a couple of weeks, I'm going to switch green screens. I'll be at the other green screen next week. <laughs> G
Gary says, how safe is it to post my public Bitcoin? Totally safe. I could post mine right now. I could even post the QR code. Send as much Bitcoin as you possibly want. The only thing is, remember, if you post your public Bitcoin uh, address, everybody can see what transactions you've done, which I don't know if that's a problem for you or not, which is why I never understood the whole thing that government and Congress has said is that that's, you know, Bitcoin and crypto digital assets are used for nefarious purposes and drug cartels. And of course, terrorism, terrorism, terror. It's not like George W. Bush for a second. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. I mean, even the, the, the former head of the CIA agency did a deep dive into it and said, this is going to be a great forensic tool for nefarious purposes because we can track everything. So for me, just remember that they can track if you want to put your public address, that's cool. But just know that they can track whatever you want. Now, for me, it doesn't really matter. I could put it up and just go, give me a bunch of Bitcoin. And that's it. Just don't give your private key. That's a little different. Uh... <laughs> Robin says, you seem a lot of time thinking about crypto for having another job. I don't have another job. I don't work for anybody. I work for myself. That's what's great about me. So for me, it's a couple. And the jobs, what are the jobs? The businesses run themselves because we, we don't run them. So the sports facility in El Paso, we have, a, we have event managers that do that. For the Airbnbs, we have property managers for that. For the Amazon business, I have an assistant who helps me with that. And then even for like this channel, I've got a couple of people that help me. So they put it out. So I'm not, I'm terminally unemployable since I stopped working for the people in 2015. Uh, I was an intake coordinator for a home health in home health care company, uh, Med Med Plus, and uh, yeah, stopped working there. And I was like, I'm gonna do my own thing. So yeah. Charles Kincan says, Rob, what's the best way to locate a bank that has good odds of not needing to use FDIC? You know, there's two tiers of banks. Uh, you know, you have your your small mom and pop bank. You've got your credit unions. Then you got the big guys. Uh, you know, you've got the city banks and the Chases and the Wells Fargo's and things like that. Those are probably the ones that are going to absorb the smaller banks, which I don't really like, but that's how it is. So the bigger the bank, probably the safer you are. However, the safer you are is probably be self-custody. But I wouldn't, me personally, I'm not going to put everything into Bitcoin right now. I still got to pay some bills and people don't take Bitcoin. Everybody. Bitcoin will kill all coins. I doubt it. I think there's going to be room. Like, look, uh, Bitcoin can't do everything. Okay. So like, I believe in Web3 gaming. I believe that's going to be the future. And I don't think Bitcoin is going to be used primarily for NFTs and and tokenization of assets and such like that. Now, the Bitcoin maximalists will say, you, Bitcoin can do everything. They just freaked out over ordinals. So I don't really know if that's really true. And then also remember this, uh, Lightning Network is out there. We need to use that a lot more because when people keep using Bitcoin more and more and more, uh, the cost of transactions go up. Speaking of which, transactions... Let's see how we're doing in the transaction fees. Not too bad, actually. So there's a website called BitInfo Charts. You can take a look at the average transaction fee historically. So when we top out, geez Louise, when we top out, the last one was in uh, November 2021, April 2021, somewhere in November. The average transaction fee at that point, geez, 62 bucks or 60, yeah, 62.7. That's a lot of money. And then today, how are we doing? $3 is what it is. However, if you're doing transaction fees on like, uh, say, like a Polygon, pennies, near, fractions of pennies, H bar, nothing. So just be aware of that. And just remember, like, that's every transaction. So good luck. Now with lighting, it's almost, it's next to Zippo. So that's it. Mm. A good credit uni, yeah. 
Why do you believe in Web3 gaming? It's because it's like this. The most popular game out there is Fortnite, right? My grandson plays it, loves it. Buys a lot of skins and weapons and cargo and all this stuff and uses, uh, what's it called? V-Bucks or whatever it is. I'm old, I don't know what it is. Spends a lot on that. And uh, I think it came out in 2017 or 2018 and it was one is the first free-to-play game to make a billion dollars. A billion dollars, free-to-play game. How they do it? People buying those things, right? So I was talking to my friend Jesus' son, Nick, today, matter of fact, as we went over to walk the shelter dogs. And I said, can you sell those? Can you resell them? He's like, no, you can't resell them. In other games, sometimes you can. So I was like, well, how do you do that? He's like, we just buy them and use them. That's it. I go, well, wouldn't it be cooler if you could like, I don't know, buy a skin or a game and use it in another game or sell it to somebody else? or upgrade it and not pay so much, like, that'd be pretty cool. So like for me, like when I take a look at like polygon-based games like Aginsu Kishi, Alaska Gold Rush and things like that, if people can share and sell off their items, I think that's the future. Instead of just having everything locked within one game. Now, are those games gonna go away? Not immediately, I don't think, but that's how I see things. The problem is, is the gamers look at NFTs and they think we're gonna nickel and dime them to death because that's what they did with the other games. Like, damn it, now I got I to gotta buy this upgrade or I won't be able to compete in this game and I get killed all the time. Headshots, right? Which I can totally understand. And now we're telling them, hey, there's these games with NFTs and you can buy, like, screw you. You're just going to nickel and dime me to death. So it's getting that education and figuring it out. I'm not a big gamer, but that's what I hear. If you want to watch big gamers, watch uh, Crypto Stash. He's, he's the guy that doesn't, knows all this stuff. Good day. You know, it's huge. Hit the likes. Yeah, Anand dude is right. This is also another problem. I think the cost of the gaming NFTs are too high, and it is stupid. Who's going to buy a three hundred dollar NFT to play a game? That's dumb. That is dumb. It's dumb on that account, and it's dumb on the the move to earn stupid things. Where like, oh, you just got to buy this NFT for like fifty bucks, five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, and like. To me, that's gambling, right? So if you want to play a game, I think all games should be free to play first of all. And if you want to upgrade and buy an NFT for $5 or whatever it is, sure, you know, be my guest and then go all the way up to whatever it is. Like I know, was it Fortnite? I think somebody sold a, uh, like a, a skinned rifle for like $150,000 or something crazy like that. And they bought it on, I think that's what it was. Correct me where I'm wrong, gamers. But yeah, three hundred dollars for NFT is kind of ridiculous. And if that's the base, like that—that's the floor. That's stupid. I don't see the point in that. I think people will get a lot farther just playing those leisure games. Very simple. Like, look, I'm going to show you a website. It's called Pogo.com, and it's a silly little place where you can play these silly little games and it's like i think it's like a hundred bucks a year or like 10 bucks a month and you don't get anything but you know it's affordable and it kills people's time and they like to play. my wife plays this all the time it's why i know about it and it's all these goofy little games and i asked her like what do you get out of this she's like tokens i'm like oh so like do you go to like an exchange and sell them she's like what are you talking about no i just get a bunch of tokens I'm like, what do you do with them? She's like, I have a bunch of tokens. <laughs> and that's it. And I'm like, I took a look at their, let's see if I can find it. Any, I think it's called similar web. Yeah, here it is. Traffic analytics and market share. Total visits to that website is 13 million per month. I don't know if those are, if those are unique visitors or not, but 13 million. Let's just say you get a million people per month and they're paying 10 bucks a piece to pay to play those games. Let me do some quick math. It's 10 million bucks. And I think that's where the money is. So to answer your question, that's why I like Web3 Gaming because you can do stuff like that. And I'm more so excited about the casual games. Yeah, people love stepping. 
Yeah, my wife's grandma played Pogo. Yeah, exactly. Boomer video games. See? Pogo is OG. Uh, have you ever met James, George, or Ben? I have never met them. Not in real life. The only person I've ever met um, is Guy, the Coin Bureau, when I went to his, uh, his event, which I'm going to go back to again. <laughs> Let's see. I think that's it, guys. God damn. Sorry, it's already dark. I can't even see in here. All right, everybody. So I'm going to wrap this up. That is it. But uh, those are my thoughts. And um, who knows what's going to happen this week. It'll be interesting when uh, the market opens up tomorrow and the banks open up tomorrow, especially with this Credit Suisse that just happened, which was, oh, shoot. It was March 19th. So we'll see what happens when the banks open up tomorrow. Should be exciting. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, a thumbs up. Apparently it helps with the algorithm. Subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys on the next one. Enjoy your evening or day. Adios.